Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about the first law of thermodynamics. So to start off with this lesson on the first law of thermodynamics, I'd like to share a quote with you. And the quote reads, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch meaning you can't get something for nothing. Now this quote is usually used uh, and it relates to things like business and economics and finance and that sort of thing. Uh, but as we'll see shortly, this quote could also be related to thermochemistry and the first law of, ther of thermodynamics. So what does the first law of thermodynamics say? Well, the first law simply says that the total energy of our universe is constant. It does not change, meaning that uh, energy cannot be created and it also cannot be destroyed. So if you take, if you give energy to one thing, that energy has to come from somewhere else. It can't just come from nowhere. So it's the same sort of thing. You can't get something for nothing. No such thing as a free lunch. And to simplify uh, our discussion on the universe, it's, uh, it's very um, useful to think of the universe as consisting of only two components that we call the system and the surroundings. So imagine this big green square, green and purple square, is the universe, and then there's two components, the outer square is the surroundings, and the inner square is the system. Now the system of the universe is defined as the part of the universe under study. So whatever you happen to be studying, whether it's uh, a chemical reaction vessel, uh, it could be the room, it could be uh, your entire planet, uh, it could be our solar system, it could even be the entire universe itself, just whatever you have defined the system to be. Now typically, uh, when we start talking about chemical reactions and energy changes associated with those chemical reactions, the system is going to be defined as the reactants and the products of the chemical reaction. So let's just keep that in mind. And then the surroundings is simply everything else in the universe that is not the system. So the first law of thermodynamics has to do with energy changes that take place uh, between a system and its surroundings. Let's talk about sign convention for just a moment. Sign convention refers to uh, what you choose to be positive and what you choose to be negative. So energy could either be flowing from the system into the surroundings or from the surroundings into the system. If energy is flowing from the surroundings into the system, in other words, if the system is gaining energy while the surroundings lose energy, we consider this a positive change in energy. So the point of view is essentially on the system. If the system gains something, that's considered a positive change. Conversely, uh, if you go in the other direction, so in other words, if energy is flowing out of the system into the surroundings, so the system is losing energy and the surroundings are gaining energy, well this is considered a negative change. Okay, so this is the sign convention that has been adopted by scientists uh, I don't know if there are any scientists uh, that do it the opposite way. Most of them do it this way, where if the system gains something, it's positive, and if the system loses something, that's considered negative. Now let's talk about the first law equation. Now the first law equation has to do with uh, two ways in which energy can flow between a system and its surroundings. And the equation looks like this, where we have delta E equals Q plus W. So that delta E term, that's called the change of internal energy. So we're going to be elaborating on what internal energy is very shortly. <clears throat> Q, uh, that is actually a symbol for heat. It's the heat that is transferred between a system and its surroundings. And then W, that is the work that is done. And the work can either be done on the system or it can be done on the surroundings by the system. So let's go ahead and define all three of these terms just so we know a little bit more about this equation. So again, delta E, that's the change of internal energy. So internal energy is the sum of all of the kinetic and potential energies of the particles that, are, uh, that compose a system. So it's all those kinetic energies all those potential energies. It's basically the total energy of a system. Q, as we mentioned before, that's heat. And heat is defined as the flow of thermal energy that is caused by a difference in temperature. So notice that heat is not the same thing as temperature. Temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy. Heat is the flow 
of thermal energy. So heat, don't really, you shouldn't really think of heat as an entity. You should think of heat as more of a process. It's the flow of energy caused by a difference in temperature. And then we have W, which obviously that's work. And we define work in the last video as the result of, of a, <coughs> excuse me, the result of a force acting through a distance. So we have the change of internal energy is equal to the sum of the heat that is transferred and the work that is done between a system and its surroundings. So let's go ahead and do a problem real quick where we apply this equation. So the problem says to calculate the internal energy change for a process that absorbs 10.0 joules of heat while doing 15.0 joules of work on the surroundings. So again, we're going to use that equation, that delta E equals Q plus W equation. Uh, the Q, that's going to be 10.0 joules of heat that are absorbed by that system. And then we have 15.0 joules of work that is done on the surroundings. But notice what the problem is saying. It says that the work is being done on the surroundings, which means it must be done by the system. And remember, anything that's done by the system on the surroundings is considered negative. And so it's going to be negative 15.0 joules. So with these problems, you always have to pay attention to how the problems are worded because you're going to use those as clues uh, to let you know uh, whether it should be positive or negative. So we have 10.0 joules minus 15.0 joules for a total of negative 5.0 joules. That is our delta E for this process. All right, so that is the first law of thermodynamics in a nutshell. Um, stay tuned for more. Lots more thermochemistry videos on the way. See ya.